My name is John Gregory. I'm a professor of pediatric endocrinology at Cardiff University. For some years now, I and a group of my colleagues have been interested in how to optimize the healthcare system for young people with diabetes. It's been well known that people with diabetes consume a substantial proportion of the NHS's resources. In recent years, there has been a move to increasingly locate care for young people with diabetes in the community rather than the hospital, usually of course at home or in school where they spend their lives, uh, with the support of paediatric diabetes specialist nurses. Indeed, most of the outcomes measured in the National Paediatric Diabetes Audit relate to elements of outpatient care. At the same time, concern has been expressed that staff working in hospitals in the acute units where these patients may be admitted when they have uh, metabolic crises are becoming de-skilled. But little is known about the extent to which these young people are admitted to hospital. About 18 years ago, a group of colleagues around Wales with an interest in diabetes and I developed a database in which we documented all newly diagnosed cases. And we know from subsequent work that this is documented in excess of 98% of all known cases. Recently, this database has been integrated into the pseudo-anonymized set of databases held in SAIL in the Health Information Research Unit in Swansea. And this has now allowed us to start asking some fundamental questions about outcomes for these young people. We're able to link data relating to individuals without knowing at any point who these individuals are. And we've started by asking the basic question, how often do young people with diabetes get admitted to hospital? And we're allowed to compare these uh, outcomes with uh, rates seen in young people of the same age and from the same socioeconomic background who do not have diabetes. My colleague Adrian Sayers is now going to present to you what it is we've done in this research and what our findings are. Hello, my name is Adrian Sayers and I'm a research fellow from the University of Bristol and I'm going to be presenting today our work on evidence for a persistent major excess in all cause admissions to hospital from children with type 1 diabetes from a Welsh national matched community cohort study. So the main objectives of this study were to estimate the excess admissions with type 1 diabetes in children in comparison to healthy controls. In addition, we wanted to explore factors that are associated with different rates of excess of admissions in type 1 diabetes in comparison to healthy controls. The design of the study is unique. We used a matched cohort study using anonymously linked health admissions data to estimate the difference in the rate of all cause admissions one month after diagnosis. The unique thing about this study is we're trying to pair similar people together so there are no differences between our subjects of interest or the patients with type 1 diabetes and the control group, which is the normal population. So the setting in this study was using patients with type 1 diabetes identified using the Brecon group cohort and we link this to hospital admissions data. The population consists of 1,577 Welsh children of newly diagnosed cases of type 1 diabetes between 1999 and 2009. We anonymously matched those individuals to 7,800 population controls, matched on age, sex, county, deprivation. The primary analysis in this study was admission rates to hospital 30 days post-diagnosis between subjects and controls. We used a special multi-level Poisson model to estimate the differences between cases and controls and results are reported as instant rate ratios. Children with type 1 diabetes were followed up for a total of 12,102 person years. We observed there was a 480% increase in admission rates in comparison to matched controls. We also found those receiving outpatient care at large centres had a 16.1% reduction in hospital admissions in comparison to those individuals being treated at small centres. We can see on this graph here that when we look at deprivation fit, that all the results are elevated in comparison to those in the highest social economic position. And this is quite clear that also when we look at large centres, there is a reduction in risk of admissions. However, when we look at the year of birth, so the change in trends across time, we see there is no distinct pattern. Similarly, we see a reduction in risk 
that every five years increases age at diagnosis. So to conclude, there is a large excess of hospital admissions in paediatric patients with type 1 diabetes. Results are highest in the youngest children with low socioeconomic status and factors that influence admission rates are small centres and they might be a case of out-of-hours resources and this needs to be explored further. The association between hospital admission rates and long-term complications needs to be explored more fully in addition. The Brecon Group Register was established through pump priming support from Novadisc and the Welsh Assembly Government and I'd like to acknowledge these individuals and thank my co-authors. One of the real strengths of this study has been our ability to compare outcomes in young people with diabetes with those seen who are of the same age, from the same socioeconomic background and living in the same part of Wales but who don't have diabetes. And this demonstrates this marked increased risk. Our findings suggest that we need to target our very young patients and those from lower socioeconomic backgrounds as these are the ones who seem to need most support to avoid being admitted. One of the interesting and unexpected observations was the greater likelihood of being admitted if you were treated in a smaller centre. I should emphasise that this does not suggest that the quality of care in these smaller centres is poorer than in the bigger centres. Indeed, far from it, the findings of the latest National Paediatric Diabetes Audit demonstrate that in terms of blood glucose control, outcomes are better in our smallest centres. But it does suggest that further research and thinking is needed about how we provide care, possibly out of hours, that helps support families with children with diabetes in a way that helps prevent their children from being admitted. This is clearly fundamental if we are to provide equality of access to medical care across the country.